take a minute to introduce and also kind of embarrass my guest speaker today. She's already looking at me already. Not embarrassed, but she's doing a great job with her and her husband. You know, about, what, about a year and a half ago, Nate? Year and a half, two years ago, when the, two years now, um, the, the rights were taking care of our youth ministry, and then they were, it was them, then it was, the, it was also um, Ray, Rachel and Scott for a while, but nevertheless, there was some changing going on there, and we needed someone to step up and, and lead our youth group, you know, and how many of you know that it's not always easy to get somebody to step up and lead a ministry, more or less a teenage ministry? You know, I can tell you they are blessings, and but, but it's not always an easy age during that in-between age between a, a child and an adult. It's a tough age. And they felt, this couple felt the need to, uh, and, and, the, and the compellingness of God to, to step in and lead this ministry. And it was hard for them, and it still is kind of at times hard for them. They were a young married couple. How, do you, how many of you know in that, in that first year of being married, it's hard to take on a ministry. Yeah. You're starting to get to know each other and, and all these kind of things. And they had two small kids of their own. And just a lot of things happening there. But they have, they have come out many, many Sunday nights when there were just only a few teenagers. And many, many Sunday nights when they didn't have their own youth building. How many of you know how hard it is to, 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 to attract young people into your church when you don't have a basketball goal or, or things of that nature? And they still came out here and while the rest of us are home having a barbecue or whatever, they're here back again at church. The reason why I know that, they can, that they're doing this is because your pastor is, most, is down here 99% of the time every Sunday afternoon too. I come back and and kind of see what they're doing and hear them lend some support. Today, um, being that it's Youth Day, I, I'm going to give Crystal um, an opportunity to share her heart and to share, you know, what she believes and, and what they believe about children. And um, is she going to be nervous? You bet. Wouldn't you be? But guess what? Are we going to encourage her? Amen. You bet. So Crystal, come on up. continued support and encouragement that you give Nathan and I. Um, without you guys, I don't know that we would be here today, and I'd be here today to do this. So I thank you for that. Um, I also want to thank Pastor Eddie and Miss Millie for being amazing mentors to my family and I. Um, you guys being the world to us, and you've taught me everything I know. So um, hopefully I make you proud. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to take a, a moment and um, just bless this message before I begin. Um, I just want to thank the Lord um, so much for bringing myself and my family here um, to join Praise Fellowship with all of you and to blessing us with an amazing church family who means the world to all of us. I just pray that the Lord can just anoint me and that he can speak through me today to you and to just make sure that this message is all of his word and none of mine. I completely surrender to him and just want him to speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, my message um, is entitled Raising Up Our Children in Christ, or Raising Up Godly Children. In today's world, we all are watching the news and seeing all the things that are happening and there's just so many things happening in this world, so many bad things. Um, and there's so many distractions as well. We have distractions like work, school, friends, sports, that just take over our lives. With a lot of these distractions, it pulls us away from the importance of God in our home and in our family sometimes. I know that I've often found myself worrying more about whether my daughter Adriana was reading her AR books than if she read her Bible. 
when I, I came to God asking him, as I started realizing how I was doing that and prioritizing things, and I came to God and I asked him, God, please tell me how I can make sure that I bring my children close to the Lord so that when they go out into the adulthood, they have an intimate and important relationship with him. The Lord laid on my heart a couple of examples that I need to be doing, a couple of things that I should do to make sure that this happens. I mean, we have to face it. The majority of our children here, they are at that age of accountability. I believe that my daughter Adriana is at the age of accountability. And I need to make sure that someday when I'm in heaven, because I'm hoping I'm going to heaven, that she is there with me. That is my purpose. The Lord blessed me with her, and he, he gave me the opportunity to be the mother, her, God, her worldly mother, to her, his child. And it is my responsibility to make sure that as she hit that age of accountability, she's ready for heaven, and she understands it. And that's all of our job as parents, as a church. It's all of ours. So some of the things that the Lord laid on my heart was the first thing is to be the example. We must lead our children by example. Jesus, he trained the 12 disciples by example. We can't expect our children not to steal, curse, gossip, if we ourselves don't do that, or do that. <laughs> um, in James 4, 8, it tells us to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The Lord is telling us in James that we need to cleanse our hands and take the sin out of us. Purify our hearts. Once we take that sin out and we purify our hearts, we'll be able to teach our children to also be pure and clean. I myself can be honest. I have been a bad example to my children from time to time. I still will. I am not perfect. None of us are. But I need to be mindful and make sure that I'm not making these mistakes such as gossiping, saying a bad word in a moment of anger. I'm in a constant working on it, but I need, you know, if we're at least conscious of it, we can make sure that we're not doing it and, and leading them by that. If they see that, if we do make that mistake and we say, we say a bad word in anger, we stop and we say, I'm sorry, God, I shouldn't have done that. And that's going to teach our children. I mean, they're like sponges. I mean, it, when I say that too, it reminds me of this time back in the nursery, Shauna Denji started scratching his back up against the wall. And my son Nathaniel, two seconds later, started doing the same thing. They pick it up right away. They're picking it up at an early age. Right now, every bad thing that we do in front of Nathaniel and every bad example, it just soaks up into him and he does it. He says the words we say, we're teaching him, we're guiding him. So we want to make sure that we're, we're putting them in that right direction. They'll follow us no matter where we lead them. So if we're leading them in the wrong direction, they're leading, we're taking them in that wrong direction. So it's so important that we make sure that we don't. I mean, think about some of the programming that we watch on TV today. Programming on TV, even on just a regular AB, ABC or Fox TV, a regular broadcast network, and think about some of the shows that are on there. There are things like premarital sex, drinking, there's cursing, even though it's not supposed to be, you know, it shouldn't be. And we're watching these programs with our children. And what that can actually do is desensitize our children to the rights and the wrongs. I know myself, although my parents may not be, you know, always reading the Bible to me as a child. My parents tried to instill good values such as saving yourself before marriage, you know, not drinking, smoking, all those things, don't use drugs. But through watching programming and so forth, every time my parents would tell me, especially as I got older, that I should wait to have sex before until I get married, I would kind of laugh at them like, oh, they don't do that anymore. Almost like that's what people did maybe back in the day, but nowadays, that's not how it works. 
And that's because I've seen it on TV so often, and my friends seen it, so now my friends are following by example. So it's so important that we watch what we're watching on TV, because we don't want to desensitize them to what is right and what is wrong. Or if they do see something like that, we can sit our children down and we can talk to them about what the Bible tells them to do. What, what, what it means, what they should be doing, how they should you know, respect their bodies and their minds and not fill it with all that stuff. Another really great thing that we should do is pray together. We should be praying in front of our children on a regular basis so that they can learn how to speak to their Heavenly Father. We can teach them to pray when they're little by using a simple saying called joy. J stands for Jesus, telling Jesus that you love him, saying thank you to the Lord and praising his wonderful name. O stands for praying for others, praying for their friends if they're not saved or if they're worried about them. And Y is for praying for themselves, asking God for something specific that you need. Also, you can ask them for, ask them for forgiveness um, if you know you did something wrong. So that's a great thing, joy. When they're little, teach them, and they can go through that, and it can be something you, you go over and over with them, and they'll remember joy, all the different ways that they can pray. We can pray with our children before um, partaking in dinner, before bedtime, if they have a big test or if they need help praying for someone in their lives. I think most of us have had a time where our children or grandchildren have come home and told us about a mean kid in school. And I know me as a parent, I just want to be angry at that kid and say that kid is a big poop. But instead, I don't want to do that. And I'm trying to teach my daughter that that child might be going through something in their lives. Kids don't always share what's happening in their lives to others. And what I need to, you know, what we should be teaching our children and what I'm trying to teach my child is that when that happens and she has that moment or if Nathaniel has that moment someday, that he can pray for that child. I've even talked to Miss Emily about, you know, she was having an issue with a friend. Pray for that friend. We can't be mad at that person. Because like I said, we have no idea, even us as adults, we have no idea what's happening in someone's mind and their heart and their lives. And instead of talking about them or putting them down, we need to be lifting them up in prayer Amen. and showing them tons of love and support because that's what's important. And when the children of this church see us doing that for each other, Instead of talking about someone and putting them down and, and, and pointing out all their bad things and just taking a moment to lift that person in prayer and not talking badly and just showing love and encouragement, our kids will do the same for each other. Yes. Amen. In James 4, 8, it tells us, Pray your children will get on their knees before God often. Amen. That's so important. It's telling us that we should be praying that our children know to get on their knees, surrender to the Lord, and pray often. Amen. We need to teach our children that using prayer, they can use it to make decisions in their lives, such as things like going to college or what careers to choose in their life. Prayer is so important. Our children must know how powerful it can be. They must know that it can actually change things. Their prayer can change the world if they want, if we teach them. We need, as a church, to also pray for our children. We need to be lifting each and every child in this church up for prayer every single day. When we wake up, we should just pray for the children of this church. In Matthew 21, 22, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. This verse, I think, is important for us to teach our children because it's telling them whatever they ask in prayer, they'll receive. 
but they have to have faith. So that's another thing we should be teaching our children, that if they have faith, their prayer, whatever they ask, will come to them. Faith is important, I believe, in our children's walk with God. If they have faith in the Lord that he is there and that he's going to get them through any situation and all they have to do is ask him, it's going to give our children a sense of security in their lives. Amen. They're going to know that no matter where they are, what they've done, that he is with them. That he is before them already solving the situation before it even happened. Yes. God. And we have got to teach them to have faith in the Lord. And, and teach them to just to just give themselves 100% to the Lord. He is a selfish God. He wants all of us, not some of us. And if he wants us, the adults, he wants all of our children. He wants every moment of their lives. He wants all of our children. He wants our children to put him before everything in their lives. Another thing we should be doing, reading the word. Amen. It's important that we make sure that we are spending time in the word ourselves, but also that our children are spending time in his word. God's word is truly a blueprint to how to live our lives. Amen. It was written for us to teach us. The word we can reference back to make decisions in our lives or to help us to deal with the situation we're in. It teaches us also how much God loved us and how much he's there for us. In 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for good work. So that's, that right there, the, my favorite part about that is it's breathed out by God. Yes. Those books that we have next to us, some of us, that is breathed out by God's words. I mean, that is amazing. I mean, what a gift. What a gift that we have to have God's word. And we can read it whenever we want. Amen. And our children can. And, and the Bible, it, it, it's profitable for teaching, it says. So it teaches us how to act, how to handle situations. It trains us. It's training us and it can train our children to go out into the world and be disciples. I mean, as Pastor Rodeo always says, we can only, the only thing we can take to heaven with us are souls. Amen. And think about what our children have. They have amazing forum. Most of our children here, they go to school. And when they're at school or if they're playing sports, if, they don't, if they're not in school, they're, they're playing sports or they're going to the library meeting other kids, they're basically, they're constantly meeting kids and adults. And they have hundreds and thousands of people that they can be reaching every day. And, it, and they can be planting seeds all over their schools. You know, my daughter, she starts her year off, she likes to pray before her meals every year. And she'll start her year off, you know, in the beginning at lunch, saying her prayer and everybody looks at her funny, she says. But toward the end of the year, she has a table full of kids praying with her. Some kids that might not even be, you know, getting that at home. But by her doing it constantly, She's found herself on the playground and kids coming up to her and asking her to pray for them. They're having a bad day. Because she takes that moment and she'll have a walk. She calls them the walk and talks. Where she'll be on the playground walking with these kids and talking and praying with them and trying to tell them what what she think you know, what God says and, and what you know how she, they can help you, you know. Just think about that forum that they have. Amen. She gets to go out into the world every day and plant seeds to all the kids. I figure there's 30 kids in her class. Praise the Lord. Then she goes to recess and she's with the whole grade. And there's a couple hundred kids. So she's able to plant little seeds all where she goes. 
And that's what all of our children can do. But they need to know what they're planting. They need to know what the word is to share it with these kids. And in the word, it tells us also that it makes us confident and equipped for every good work. It equips our children to go out there and to be the good disciples. And it also is going to equip them to deal with such situations such as peer pressure. Amen. And so forth. And, and how to deal with relationships and how to respect their bodies. The word talks, you know, a lot about how they should treat their, themselves and, and what marriage is. And, and they need to know this information because once they, they understand God's love and they have faith in him and they accept him as their Lord and Savior, they're going to know that when they go out into the world and they start dating and so forth, they're not going to, you know, give in to that peer pressure. They're going to know and respect themselves and know that God is going, wants him, them to be pure. And they're going to hold themselves for marriage. But they need to learn that. And the way they're going to learn this is through his word. In Romans 15.4, for whatever is written in former days was written for instruction. That through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. In this, it's telling us that this... The scriptures are written for instruction to us. And it's to give us encouragement so that we can have hope. We want our children to have hope. I know that our, our children, they're listening to the news with us. My daughter hears about ISIS and, and all these things that, you know, she knows that what the Bible says about the end of time. She's also watched every video on it and every end of times movie. So she's, she's, she's prepared. And she has hope that through all this bad, she's not scared. She's not scared at all. Because she knows that God's coming for her. And no matter what she might endure in this world, or see, or ha you know, have to go through, she could care less. She has hope because she knows that God is coming. God is coming to her. And all of our children and all of us need to know that. We not to be scared about what's in the news and everything like that and the end of times. Who, who cares? The sooner that we get to go to be with the Lord, the better. There is a much better world for us there. It is a much better place for us to live up in heaven with God. And we need to offer our children that hope so that they don't have to watch the news and be sad. Because there's nothing to be sad about. So that's why, those are the reasons why we really need to get our children into the Word. Amen. Amen. We also need to teach our children about someone really special, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Sorry. The Holy Spirit is important to our walk with God. Amen. He's our friend. Yes. He's our comforter. Yes. He's our guide. Amen. Our children should know that once they accept the Lord as their Savior, that the Holy Spirit is with them. Yes. The Holy Spirit is their helper. The Holy Spirit is not only important, but it's essential to their lives. Amen. In, in fact, the coming of the Holy Spirit was equally as important as the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ saves us from our past, but the Holy Spirit empowers us to live the life that God created for us. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, our lives are going to be stuck in neutral and going nowhere. We desperately need the empowerment of the Spirit to grow and mature in our spiritual walk. Like Pastor says, we have to get off the bottle and get empowered. Amen. And the way we're going to do that and the way our children are going to get off the bottle and get empowered is by having that Holy Spirit and being comfortable with the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. In John 14, 26, but the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance of all that I've said to you. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is a gift. It's a gift that we receive from, from our Holy Father. He gives it to us to remind us 
of what is said to us, what, 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 he, what he is teaching us, what, what Jesus brought to us. It gives us that conviction when we know we shouldn't do something. It guides us in the right directions. In Romans 8.26, likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with deep groanings too deep for words. So when we don't know and when our children don't know what to pray for or what to ask for, the Holy Spirit intercedes for them. Amen. Our children are not too young to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They just need to be educated about it. Amen. They need to know that if they ask, they shall receive. Yes. In Luke eleven thirteen, if you then who are evil know how to give gifts, good gifts, good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Amen. All our kids have to do is ask him. Yes. They need to know that all they have to do is ask him. That's it. And they have to accept Jesus Christ. <laughs> Think about this. How amazing would this church be if all our kids, teenagers, young ones, were walking around here praying in the spirit? Could you imagine? We would be so powerful. Think about this. I mean, we are only as strong as our kids are. Amen. Because the children, they are the, the future of this church. And they're the most important thing. I mean, this new building that we're building is not for any of us. It's for our kids. And if we're not empowering them and giving them the things that they need and, and, and feeding them and planting seeds and encouraging them, there will be no church. Because they, they will walk away from the faith if they don't know what it really is. If they don't understand it and they're not taught about it, they will step away from it. They're getting older. Like I said, they're all getting to that age of accountability. They have to make the choices sooner rather than later. Because let's face it, tomorrow, it's not promised to any of us. If we want to, you know, college, it, it, don't get me wrong, it's important. But we don't know if our children are even going to make it to college. We are seriously in the end of times. We have no idea when he's coming back for us or our children. So we need to prioritize their relationship with the Lord over some of those other things doesn't mean that we have to put all those things aside and but we need to make sure that God's coming number one Amen. we need to make sure that they're staying in the word praying and leading by example because they too need to lead by example Amen. they're a great witness in their schools and if they're acting crazy or cursing or, or just doing things they shouldn't do they're not exactly being a good witness to the people out in their schools. So we need to make sure that they, they know what they should be doing. It tells us in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way they should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Amen. That right there sums up the whole message. If we train up our children, they will not depart from the Lord. And I don't believe that it's the responsibility solely of just the parents either. The parents are the ones that we build that solid foundation at home. But it's us as a church, the leaders and the congregation, that we help to build on that foundation. That's why we're, it's not a coincidence that we're all here in this building today or that we're all here together. The Lord brought us together for a reason. And he wants us to build these children up. He wants us helping each other. Amen. And what we can do as a church is taking time for our youth. When we see a kid, whether it be little Nathaniel or Caden, to Daniel and Joey, stopping, letting them know, hey, do you need prayer today? Or just saying, I've been praying for you. 
I know that when that saying, I've been praying for you, means the world. Miss Terry, she would tell me I've been praying for you almost every day before I go to work. So I know when I get to work, I'm okay. Because Miss Terry already, she was already praying for me, and I feel good. She encourages me. And we could be doing that for our kids. They should know that we are praying for them. We're praying they have a good summer. We're praying they have a good year come August. We're praying that they have a good time at college and that they learn a lot. We could be doing this for our children and just think what a difference it can make in their lives. Because like I said, prayer, when somebody tells me that they've been praying for me, a lot of you have told me today that you've been praying for me for this message. And it just means the world to me. And it will mean the world to our kids. <clears throat> So with this message, I just ask that us as a church just take time for our youth. I know that a lot of people, whenever we have a fundraiser, everyone comes out and does a great job, and, and we appreciate it. But just take a moment with each of our kids sometimes and just let them know you're thinking about them. And us as parents, this message goes to me as well. These are things that I often forget to do. Like I said, I'm worried more about Adriana's AR than anything else in the world sometimes with her because AR is probably the worst thing ever invented. But it's so important that they're, they're reading their word and spending time with the Lord. Um, Jan from uh, Marion Oaks Church of God, she taught me something that she teaches her kids, and I think it's great we can teach our older kids this. It's called 15, 15, and 15. 15 minutes of praise, 15 minutes in the word, 15 minutes of prayer. It's 45 minutes that we can ask our children for out of their day to spend some time with the Lord and in their word. And I think that that's, that's not too much to ask them. They can do it any time of the day. So there's, there's definitely ways that we can help our children out. And I just want to thank everybody. That's my method. I want to thank everybody again for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> Just have some of our youth. I don't care. Just come across the front. I just want them to be prayed for today. They're going into a new school year. Some going into college. Some going into middle school, high school, and or just going out into this world. And, and when Crystal asked me, could she pray over her and they pray over the kids? I said absolutely. I said we will stand up as a congregation, stand with us, please, and stretch our hands towards these young people. And I have Nate and um, and um, Crystal pray over them as well, and, I, and I'll say a prayer, and you can you can join in this prayer. What you proud over? This is a good couple here. As we pray for these kids, we should continue to pray for this family here, the Roberts. How many of you know the enemy would have nothing not more than to destroy this family? They're like trying to reach these kids. So, Father God, in Jesus' name. As Crystal and Nathan and his congregations are praying over these children right now, God, we pray a hedge of protection around their lives. Dear God, we pray that you would give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding, God, of the ways of God. That they would have the courage and the, and the spirit of conviction, God, over the things of this life and this world, God. God, that in Jesus' name, when the, when the enemy comes against them, God, that they will remember that no weapon formed against them shall prosper this day, God. That God, in Jesus Christ, greater is he that lives inside of them than him who lives inside this world. God, we just pray right now a blessing upon each and every one of these young people, God, as they go from elementary to middle school, middle school to high school, high school to college, God, as they go and they hang out with their friends or go to school or go to the bowling alley, God, or to a movie theater, God, wherever they may be, wherever they may sleep, walk, talk, and act, God, that you would be with them by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would give them the courageous words, God, to say to those that are lost, God, and that they would, they would ask the, the famous question, what would Jesus that they face, God. Oh, God, may they be soft. 